Good afternoon. And before I say anything uh, from the team, I hope you're all well. You're all staying together and you're all distancing. Now, I seen it on the telly, you've got to be two meters apart. Well, I've got a meter by here, and he's got a meter, and that means we're two meters apart. Right? But I'm glad you're well, and I'm glad that you joining us. Now, today, gloriously, we're in the cemetery of St. Gwynos. This church, 6th century, only about six months older than him. <laughs> right? But he was built here, it was called St. Gwynos, and it was named after the Saint St. Gwynos, who was also the patron saint of Antrisant. This area is called Llanwynol. The oldest known grave within this cemetery is 1167, which is quite impressive. Now, me and my colleague, we've done a skirmish going through the, uh, the Huru, and we've got the location of Thomas Chester's grave. The only trouble is, you need a fighting patrol with axes and flamethrowers to get through to it. But we know the general area of it. Now, the interesting thing about Thomas Chester, Thomas Chester come from Knoll in England. And he joined the army and he was in the South East Borders, which was then the second battalion. 24th Warwickshire's, in this case anybody saw shouting at me. He survived the battle at Rock's Rift and he came down for work and he came down to Ferndale. Now he worked in pit number five in Ferndale and he was a coal trimmer and apparently what happened is when the trams come down for trimming they ring a bell or they shout or something and two trams were released. No word was given to Thomas Chester and he was killed. Now Thomas Chester originally lived in River Row and then he moved because he found out and I'm trying to be as delicate as possible that when he was underground doing the work. His wife was above ground doing the work and the other miners that were not doing anything were very very grateful. So when he came back up he found out about it and he took her back and he left her note and he came back and when he came back he got lodgings in Long Row. Now uh, actually got a photograph of the street and it quite possibly could be him in it, I'm not sure, but we'll put that up just to show you. Now when he died, because he was a lodger and he was living in a rented accommodation, there was no one there to bury him, because in them days he didn't have Amazon and his own insurances. And the, the miners put together and the coffin was made by the carpenter in the mine and they carried him from Ferndale up to Flavinor. Now anybody that knows the area, once you get to Berenklache and you've got the hill, uh, it's like that. Three quarters of the way up in St. Peter with oxygen just to get you up the rest of it. It was so steep and they carried this man out of respect and they buried him behind my shoulder, just about where the wall is. <laughs> now, this grave is not marked, and we don't know where or who has got deeds for it, because in the very, very early 60s, Aberystwyth 
University sent to all the churches in the area asking for a grid of the cemeteries. This, and there's one in Markham, they sent the grid of all the locations of every grave to Aberystwyth and it must have been posted second class because it still haven't arrived. Uh, and because of that, there's no way of actually saying that is his grave. So what I've done, I've got a list of everybody in a spirit. I've got located graves that were from 1908. And just below them, there's an area that where the grass was dead, you could see that there was dips and I've seen the curate of St. Grinnells and he reckons that that's where 1908 were buried. So, I don't apologise for not confirming it because it's not like time team, I can't go and dig him up. Right? So you'll have to take my word on it. But if you want to see the plans and the work and everything about him, I'm more than willing to show you. Now, Thomas Chester, like I say, was a survivor of Rokes Drift. But in them days, there was no such thing as pensions, no such thing as regimental associations. So he was by himself. So just think, irrespective of what you do in life, you don't know what you're going to do in death. That's what we know is you're going to stop functioning on this land and you're going to go somewhere else. But the important thing is that he's remembered.